Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great weekend. And today I have another Photoshop editing tutorial for you guys. Today we're gonna to be creating a portrait with a dark and moody kind of feel. Obviously another look that I like on Instagram, it's very popular. So let's jump right into Adobe Camera Raw and get started with this edit. And just before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to Run and Gun so you're getting all of my latest Photoshop tutorials, my tips and tricks videos, and anything that could help you with your photography. So hit that subscribe button before we get started and let's jump right into the video. So I'm here in Adobe Camera Raw and this portrait looks pretty great so far. It's fairly well exposed. Again, I always refer back to this histogram. Everything looks great. The shadows are not being clipped. Most of our exposure range is in this mid-tone area. You can see this almost perfect bell curve. It's a little bit dark in the shadows, but that's fine. And none of the highlights are clipped, which is fantastic. So starting off, this portrait looks a little bit warm and a little bit green. So I'm just gonna hit auto white balance, see how that looks. That perfectly corrected, added a little bit of blues and a little bit of magentas just to cool it down and get rid of some of that green tint. So that was perfect for auto white balance. Otherwise I could have sampled somewhere in the horse, but I might've gotten some inaccurate readings because the hair in the horse looks a little bit yellow in some areas just because of the light or the skin underneath. But for the most part, that white balance looks pretty good. All right, now to edit the main photo. So I did a couple of adjustments earlier. Here was what I came up with. It looks much better than before. I just brightened everything up a little bit, turned up the exposure slightly. I turned down the contrast. I actually might turn that up just a hint. I like that a little bit better. I turned down my highlights because it was getting bright in this area of the horse. I like this as the focal point of the image. Create some contrast right here and your eye goes right to the face. But I didn't want your eye getting stuck on the belly of the horse right there and it brought down the hair. It was a tiny bit overexposed. I turned down the blacks just so that we could have some of this back here, some of this foliage just kind of disappear into the background. and. Like I said, turn down the highlights and turn up the shadows to get a little bit more detail in the image. And I turned up the shadows quite a bit here. It didn't actually do too much, but you have to turn that slider up quite a bit to get it to have an effect, just to bring out some of these details in the eye, some of the details in the face that we might lose later on when we add this dark and moody effect to our image. So that looks good for Adobe Camera Raw. Let's hit OK and open up our image in Photoshop and finish up our dark and moody look. All right, so here is the final look that we're going for. I have everything together here in a group and I can turn that on and off and you can see the dramatic changes that it makes to our image. So for right now, let's go through our group and see what we did and kind of break down what we did to this image. So we will turn all of these off and go through step by step how I recreated that dark and moody feel to our portrait. So one of the first things that I do is I come in here and I create a vignette. So here's my vignette layer. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. You can either do a ellipse marquee selection and then invert that selection by simple as this, select, create that new layer, command shift I to invert it. So you're selecting the outside of your selection, your original ellipse and your inside won't be affected. And then I can go change my fill layer to black, set that to the background, fill that with black, and then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then that will create a nice vignette. If I really blur it out, it takes a second to load. That creates a nice vignette, hit okay. And then as soon as it loads, we can set that to soft light and there is a nice vignette right there. You can also use the method I showed in my last dark forest edit, where you use the gradient tool to go in and kind of paint in your own vignette. So for now we have our vignette. Let's take a look at some of these layers and some of the adjustments I made. So let's start off with this lift layer I have right here. This is actually a curves adjustment layer. And you can see when I turn that on, that really lifts our shadows and brings our shadows into this gray, almost mid-tone region. So you can see the curve I have right here. And if I were to reset this, and we can turn this on and off and see what it does. On the left-hand side here in our shadows, I actually took this point and I lifted up our shadows. And that turned our shadows from a dark, crushed black 
and lifted them up into the grays. So this is kind of the first step we're taking towards actually seeing that moody look. So I did the exact same with our highlights. I brought them down quite a bit and you can see that has a huge effect here again on the belly of the horse which is our main focal point this belly here and the face. I don't want the belly of the horse to be in too much competition for the face. I want it to draw the eye in this area for contrast and that's about it. I want your eye to go straight to that face. So we took that down. These dark and moody portraits usually have a little bit of a clipped highlight feel to them and that works really well because we don't actually have any clipped highlights here so we're not really losing any, any data. We're just bringing down our highlights a little bit and bring down our exposure just in our highlights. Okay, so that was our lift layer. Let's go to our crush layer. And our crush layer, you can see, crushes those blacks right back. Now, I divided this up into two different curves layers just so I could have the most amount of editability and I can really change things more than I could if I tried to do this all in one curves layer. So, as you can see, I added a nice little S curve. I brought down our highlights just a tiny bit more. I'm gonna bring those up in the mid-tones just a tad. There we go. So your eye is going right to that face. And you can see another huge step towards that dark and moody feel. We lifted our shadows and then we crushed them back down and we got rid of some of the detail in this background that was just distracting us and it's looking much better. We're getting really close to that look. So our next layer you can see here is our color balance layer. Let's turn that on and let's open up our color balance and see what I did here. For our mid-tones, I like to keep those nice and warm, so I added some yellow to get rid of those cool tones, add a little bit of a magenta to get rid of some of these green mid-tones in there that were a little bit distracting, and then added a little bit of red to get that nice red feel and warmth in the face. And for our shadows, added some blues. I'm actually gonna bring those down, a little more blue in the shadows, just add some contrast between the shadow and the face that adds just a little bit of that almost orange and teal kind of look to our image and then add a little bit of cyan into our shadows. I'm gonna go back down to our mid-tones. I'm gonna take away the red because it's just a little bit too much. Take down that magenta and that yellow. There we go, I like that a little bit better. Let's go to our highlights. And our highlights look pretty good. You have to be really careful with your highlights and always make sure you have preserved luminosity on Otherwise, your colors can get a little bit wacky and you lose your contrast in your image. So I adjusted these a tiny bit, add a little bit of cyan just to get rid of some of those mid-tones that started overflowing into our highlights because we had some of these really harsh red mid-tones and I didn't want our highlights to turn red. So I corrected a little bit, added some cyan, added just a hint of blue and that looks good for the overall color theme or color palette that I'm going for. And last but not least, turn on our hue and saturation layer. And this is where I just brought down the overall saturation of the image. We're gonna open up that layer. And for master, bring it down just a touch. And then we'll go into the individual colors. So my reds, I brought down slightly. And I did bring down the lightness of the overall reds in the image. You can see here, just in the face, it was a little bit too much. Let's go down to our yellows. I brought our yellows up because our highlight right here that goes across the skin and in the hair, I really wanted that to pop out. So I brought down the saturation because it was a bit too much originally, and then I brought up the lightness just so we could get that pop in there and that contrast that I really like. And in the greens, so our greens were pretty harsh, so a little trick I like to do in these dark and moody style portraits and landscapes is pull our greens and push them towards blue. That adds to those shadows, especially because we have those nice dark blue shadows in the background. And then I brought down the saturation and then brought up the lightness just so you could see this hint of green forest and foliage in the background. And for cyan, blue, and magenta, there really wasn't much cyan, blue, or magenta anywhere except for the shadows. So I just left those alone. So that is the basics of how I got this dark and moody edit. There's a lot of ways to do this and each one of these layers is so customizable. You just have to start from your curves or your color balance and just keep working your way up and keep adding adjustment layers to create this dark and moody look. So once again, let's take a look at the before. Such a flat image, it looks really dull. 
and then we added this dark and moody feel and now your eye goes straight to the center of the image. It just adds to the mysterious nature of this photo and it makes the viewer a little bit curious about what's going on and what our subject is feeling. So that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Make sure you hit that like button if you like this tutorial and hit that subscribe button and the notification button if you wanna get all of my weekly videos. I will see you guys next weekend and until next time, make sure you get out and go shoot.